morning, everyone, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I'm your host, Chewbacca, and that's as much as I'm going to do for uh, your Halloween special. <laughs> uh, I didn't really prepare too much for Halloween, but you guys get to enjoy a uh, brand new dub and stuff later today where I make fun of uh, some old school musicals, Sweeney Todd and Oliver, with an exclamation point. But we'll talk, we'll show you a little bit later, but let's dive right into a little bit of new stuff. Uh, this week, um, big news is that the uh, public, uh, the public safety and health, and the Missoula City County Health Department put uh, tighter restrictions on uh, social distancing, um, COVID response. Um, the numbers are getting higher here in Missoula County, and they're looking to curve it. And on Tuesday, they decided to be like, okay, so here are the main points that we want to make sure that people understand: is that uh, we want 50% uh, capacity at restaurants and. Uh, kind of places of gathering and whatnot. Uh, they want to close the bars at 10 p.m. Um, they, and they will begin to be uh, talking about this some more on November 12th. November 12th is going to be another day where they're going to be uh, looking at the numbers, seeing if there's any improvement. Uh, and part of the improvement in, involves if there's only an average of about 25 new cases uh, in that week. Um, so they're going to look, uh, they're going to look into that a little bit more uh, to try to see that. But for right now, uh, many places are limited to uh, and even events and gatherings. Uh, the state is about 50 people, and Missoula's is going to be about 25 or less people. Uh, so Missoula is very concerned, including the hospitals within the city of Missoula. Uh, it started as of Thursday. At 8 a.m., Missoula Hospital staff pleaded to the city of Missoula saying that they are keeping up, but as the numbers increase, are afraid that the hospitals will be beyond capacity. Uh, not only that, but they also reported that 33 of their staff, including 10 registered nurses, are out due to community spread from their families. Another note from Rob Watson, superintendent of Missoula County Public Schools, said that schools are doing great, and those kids who got COVID uh, were through community spread. Um, and also, mind you, are staying home. So far, this is a short-term deal, and they'll go into a little bit more about this. So if they see if numbers go down to 25 new cases on average, they will loosen restrictions. City County Health Department will meet again on this matter on November 12th. Um, and by meet, they're going to do another uh, Teams meeting, uh, a joint meeting and whatnot. Um, and speaking of COVID, Italy is also seeing a quite a resurgence in COVID numbers as well. Um, but starting in October... They saw peaks higher than the beginning of the pandemic, and this week saw over 20,000 new cases in Italy. Uh, protests resulted in higher restrictions in which uh, their uh, restaurants and bars would close at 6 p.m., adjacent to Missoula's 10 p.m. Um, honestly, uh, when it comes to COVID, it really just takes one person to uh, really just kind of spread it throughout the community, and that's kind of how it started in a lot of countries. Uh, the U.S. Department of Justice is uh, looking to press criminal charges to China, but not for COVID. Um, eight operatives from the People's Republic of China caught the eye of FBI and the DOJ, and over three years of collecting evidence has led to these arrests for what Eastern District of New York U.S. Attorney Seth Ducharme said, the Chinese government directed the defendant to engage in illegal activity to coerce a New Jersey resident identified as John Doe, to return to China to face charges. At one point, one of the defendants and an unidentified co-conspirator allegedly placed a note on the door of Doe's home saying that if you're willing to go back to the mainland and spend 10 years in prison, your wife and child will be all right. And that's the end of the matter. America has been home to many people who fled China. Each of them, each of the eight defendants are facing up to five years in prison. Uh, lots, of, lots of new stuff happening this week as well. But I have a couple other things we can talk about as well. And I'm going to be talking about some of uh, the tobacco ban on flavored e-cigarettes, menth menthol cigarettes, and all that stuff later in my city council report. Um, the city, of course, if you already know this, is that the city uh, decided to put it back to committee, and which we'll talk about a little bit more later in the week. But they're going to be talking about some other things as well to tighten up some... Uh, loopholes and other things, so I'll talk about that a little bit later, but without further ado, here is a cool little promo that uh, me and um, uh, my boss, Joel, uh, created about our new library, so check it out. NCAT is Missoula's community media resource. NCAT offers equipment like camera rentals and training like instruction. 
and distribution help like cable TV channels, starting your own YouTube channel, a short clip for Instagram or Facebook. MCAT helps people who want to make TV shows, social media clips, and podcasts. In our new home in the Missoula Public Library, MCAT will be offering classes in camera use, getting the best sound and lighting quality, how to use a multi-camera studio with green screen and other special effects. In addition, we will be teaching video editing on popular platforms like iMovie, Final Cut Pro, and Adobe Premiere. For kiddos, we offer animation classes, along with other multimedia activities for after school, during the weekend, and summer camps. MCAT has been serving the Missoula community for over 30 years with the material and the guidance to let your creative side blossom in audio-visual video. Be sure to visit us on the first floor of the new Missoula Public Library. All right, it's time for my favorite part of the show, Pre-Critic. Hope you enjoyed that promo for the new library. We have some new movies and shows coming out this week. The Craft Legacy. Do you guys remember Shannon Doherty? Whatever you answer, it's wrong because you should know Shannon Doherty. Uh, who doesn't like macaroni? The Craft stars... Wait. Sorry. This movie's called The Craft Legacy, and we're not talking about the mac and cheese. This movie is kind of like the original in which a group of edgy teenage girls, uh, in the uh, hopes of sisterhood, began a witch cult, and they use uh, forbidden magic to get what they want and curse who they hate. And as a result, they learn lessons, and because it, 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 there's, there's always a cost to cursing people, and blah, 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 all that stuff. But then there's also a shiny new girl who gets in way over her head, you know, like the girl who's supposed to be our eyes to the movie, because there's always like a new girl in school who's like, I just don't know where I belong. And then these girls are just like, we're edgy teens, and we know magic. And she's like, oh, I want to belong. I, I, I guess I'll learn magic. And that's where she opens a can of worms and all this stuff that happens, which is right High school, wrong. Welcome to hell and high school. Uh, I want my mac and cheese. <laughs> His House. Another horror kind of-esque movie. This movie follows a group of refugees from Sudan as they adjust to a white horror film. Let me guess. They go into a town that seems nice, but it's actually not. And under the surface, uh, there's one person in town like... <laughs> you live in the old Johnson house, don't you? <laughs> that's bad news because everyone who moved in there died. So that's kind of like the om like an omen for uh, horror movies. Enjoy a film that just kind of happens, and horror films are usually a group of people um, and another group of people that you don't really get invested in and who get killed over the course of the movie, and you're just like, oh no, the main character, is he going to live or is he going to die? Boom. And um, anyways... Enjoy small doses of microaggressions, and not in my backyard, you don't belong here. Why is this called his house and not their house? I'm triggered, and the funny thing about triggered is, uh, triggered is everywhere. Uh, another, another movie is coming out is The Horrors of Technology. It's called Come Play. This movie is about technology coming to get ya. Um, Come Play star <laughs> starts with a boy. As a creepy horror movie with kids always do, discover a world of evil technology, uh, evil inside technology. Um, it's basically just an anti-big tech kind of film. Uh, <laughs> the more t so the point of, I guess the point of this movie is the more screen time that your kid has on their iPad or whatever, the more that evil's going to come and get them. I think this is kind of like they got inspired by that one um, thing, um, Momo or whatever. Um, so ignore all this and prevent the demons from getting into our wor world through your kids' electronic devices. Uh, I can see the end of this movie that the characters say, Why don't they, insert monster here, stop killing us? The not iPad ran out of battery. <laughs> then, like any horror movie, the post-happiness is destroyed. They never needed a full battery life the whole time. Monster attacks from our world at the end. All right. So, while that kid is playing Pokemon and Kill, let's jump into a uh, cyberpunk ghost uh, runner. It's a game called Ghost Runner. Quench your cyberpunk thirst with Ghost Runner, a game that makes you a cyber ghost thing and you attack monsters and save the day unless this is a dystopian society. And let's face it, all cyberpunk games talk about the evils of big tech. I don't know why I'm on this rant about big tech. Uh, much like sci-fi movies talk about the danger of science and scientists are evil, uh, it's like pop culture telling us not to trust scientists and technology. Hmm. 
Anyways, beat people up in a game that calls itself Cyberpunk. Alright, so there's, that's my really fast rendition of Pre-Critic. And up next, we got Sweeney Todd, the Demon Barber of Fleet, uh, Fleet Street uh, from 1936's uh, movie, uh, which is in the public domain. And I redubbed it, hence the show, hence the segment. I call dubbing stuff. Check it out. Boy for sale. Hello, fine gentlemen. I see you have a young boy. This is not a boy. This is an orphan. We ran out of room in the shelter, and he needs a home oh, stat. I cannot uh, just take a boy. You have a moral obligation to God himself to take this boy. And uh, perhaps we can work something out. He's fuel efficient, uh, low calorie. Come on now. I guess there's no shame in inviting strangers into my house. Would you guys like some tea or whatever we English do nowadays or back in the days or... Uh, so tell me, boy, what are your political leanings? Boys do not have the right to vote, for they are young children, and they do not have brains. Isn't that right, kid? You don't have any brains? Don't be nervous. Tell the man about your lack of brains. Uh, <laughs> Go on, child. Um, hmm? No brains whatsoever. <clears throat> Quite. Well, he is small, and he can fit into small places. And he doesn't have to bend over as much to pick up all your socks or whatever? A couple years ago, you suffered from that uh, Tiny Tim disease, isn't that right? Uh, you mean ADHD? Wonderful. No. This is quite wonderful indeed. Now, tell me, boy, do you belong to a uh, conservative group or a liberal? Well, that's enough right now. You, you better sign these papers. This boy is all yours. Well, this is happening awfully fast. <laughs> Cross but okay, I guess when people put paper in front of the me, I have to eyes. It. Here you go. This is my John Hancock. John Hancock is a terrorist. An American terrorist. But, you know, we're from British. Okay, boy. You have to be good. See you later. <laughs> it looks like he's pre your problem now. Ooh, what an interesting fellow that man is. Perhaps I shall buy that hat when I go to the store next week. Mmm, my boy, come here, please. Let me take a good look at you. Would you say you're part of the bigwig party or the smallwig? Uh, I don't recognize either side as viable. So you're quite a little radical, are you? <laughs> uh, well, not quite exactly. I'm a bit of a radical myself, young man. Would you like to see my switchblade? I've seen plenty. I'm sure you have, you dirty little street rat. Uh, let me ask you something. Would you like to hear my life story? Uh, uh, please, please don't tell me your life story. I was a young man, as young as you, when I decided to become a... Oh, no, please. Please, just stop. It was the year without a summer. Mount Tambora erupted. It was cold, and so many people died. <laughs> uh, please stop. Well, come on now. The story's just getting good. If it's not good from the beginning, oh, no? it's never gonna be good. Oh, um, I have a really good idea. I want you to go to the store, buy a pen, I need a pen, and some paper, and you're going to write these stories down. Oh no, do I have to? Oh no, guess I have to find the place. Now hurry on back. <laughs> I'll be waiting. Uh, oh. Hey guys, welcome back to Wake Up Missoula. I'm your host, once again. I don't know why I'm introducing the show again, but we're introducing the City Council Report, where I talk a little bit about what's happening. And one of the biggest things that's happening is that the city is renting out the old library building, and one of the places is Sheck, which is the Sovereign Hope Church here in Missoula. And it was a very short meeting. Uh, overall with everything because they decided to put the uh, smoking back into committee and so uh, they kicked off things with the old library site and how much rent will cost. Dale Bickle, Chief Administrator Officer for the City of Missoula, speaks on that. In our uh, working with Sheck for the proper, for the, uh, um, for the lease of the property at the former library site, um, we uh, didn't close a communication loop properly. Uh, they were um, hoping for a, a, a slightly lower uh, rental rate. Um, we worked with our property manager to come up with a rate of $3,000 per month. It still meets a, a fair market value um, 
um, for the property that they are uh, leasing, which is uh, um, uh, which we've calculated at sixteen dollars um, a square foot for the office space and um, eight dollars a square foot for storage and um, the the larger open space areas, um, and it's only that um, uh, use in that area on uh, Sundays. So. Uh, uh, requestfully propose that that lease amount, that rate be changed to $3,000 per month. Sheck is the uh, Sovereign Hope Church here in Missoula, and so far the old library space has been used for Parks and Recreation and Base Camp Missoula. The old library bu building is being used for office space, and uh, Sheck is going to be using this uh, on Sundays, uh, but they're not going to use it as much as these other organizations, so they're looking to cut a deal with the city of Missoula. Gwen Jones, uh, also with the city council, agrees they should have lower rates because of this. The, the Sheck um, lease is, it's a nonprofit. I don't think, uh, I think it's totally reasonable to have a, a lower amount. Um, and knowing the history of where they previously had their um, church services and that that now is a property that the city owns um, and is using for other purposes. I think they've worked with us and it's it's incumbent on us to work with them. So I, I think this is fine to make it work for everyone. And just a little more background of kind of like with the old library what happened. So those of you who don't know is that they did a, a land swap with Terry Payne, the uh, real estate uh, entrepreneur and philanthropist here in Missoula. And uh, part of that was uh, once they swapped lands, Terry Payne uh, decided to donate the old library property and entirety to the city of Missoula, um, in which they have been renting out, and they're trying to figure out a more long-range plan for the site as well. So they're going to figure out what they're going to do with it. Um, I've heard that regardless of um, what the city decides, they're still going to end up tearing down the old library site. Um, so Miss Auberg talks about the new policy. policy. Oh, never mind. That, uh, I gave you too much background, but let me give you a new introduction to a new topic in which the city of Missoula uh, decided to put tighter restrictions on trapping when it comes to it within the county involving parks and trails within Missoula, and they wanted to tighten up uh, the ordinance to uh, do this. So this is Miss Auburn, talks about the new policy when involving traps in Missoula parks and trails. This is what she had to say. To spring, release, or confiscate animal traps or snares found within city parks, trails, or conservation lands. There were uh, three specific areas we looked at uh, changing or amending in this ordinance. First, we thought it was appropriate to separate uh, trapping from the hunting provision, just so that it was uh, more clear that trapping is prohibited. We also um, included uh, the body gripping traps and snares in, the, in what is prohibited. And we finally, we also gave the judge or court more discretion in uh, what somebody could be sentenced to at the end, including restitution, if they injured or um, killed a pet. Basically, this would not affect general hunting and trapping in federal lands, but more of a not in Missoula's backyard kind of situation. And over the years, trapping has become less and less used and small groups of people still have the practice today, uh, but not commercially as it once was when they had a huge fur trade, which brought a lot of people out to the West uh, Montana Fish, Wildlife, and Park on their website said, bird trapping is highly regulated, uh, biologically sustainable, and an important part of Montana's cultural history and outdoor lifestyle. Missoula parks and trails are used by many folks and their pets as part of this to prevent any loopholes for folks who can do whatever they want. Uh, most of this was to provide justice to pet owners whose cot gets in traps as well. Stephen Capra with Footloose Montana responds to this updated ordinance. Uh, and I just want to thank you for the thoughtful deliberation you had on this issue. Um, I think all of you have looked at this and realize um, this is a serious safety threat for the community. I especially want to thank Julie Merritt for her efforts on this. And I think uh, all of us understand that uh, we need to keep our community safe and we're a community of recreation and people like to get outdoors. And what we have to do is ensure public safety. And so I just want to say thank you. All of you have looked at this issue. You've mm -hmm. voted on it a few times. And I think everybody understands this pretty clearly. And so far, trapping is being used, but just not as much or not as much in the popular uh, line side of the hunting season. Uh, of course, I did have a friend who uh, bought a trap so they can trap their dog. And uh, she lost her dog a couple 
months ago. Um, it was up in the mountains and everything, so she she had to uh, basically get a large trap in, that would be able to trap her dog. So a lot of ways, trapping isn't always used for hunting, but also could be used to uh, procure a, a lost pet as well who got lost in the forest. And luckily, they, she was able to get her pet back and uh, be, be able to feed it back because it was malnourished. Anyways, the movie did, the, um, the city did, um, the city so moved to pass this update, and we are now going to dive into the flavor ban on tobacco products here in the city of Missoula. Stacey Anderson kicks it off. So we are uh, sending this back to committee, and we'll hear it, be hearing it on Wednesday, November 4th in Wednesday. the afternoon. Um, time on that to be determined. So, but um, that is our intention to give the sponsors a little bit more time for draft language and then with final consideration on Monday, November 9th. Well, there you go. <laughs> That's it, uh, which would explain the short meaning, but they will discuss this next Wednesday during public safety and health. Uh, Earl from Noons is happy that the city is moving this back to committee and this is what he had to say. I think there were some misconceptions out there and I appreciate the fact that the uh, Public Health and Safety Committee took a little time and will continue to take a little more time going forward to, uh, to discuss these things. Hopefully I can uh, make sure I'm part of that conversation going forward. I also wanted to uh, happily announce that two more of my Noons crew members passed compliance checks over this last weekend, another new employee and another long-term employee so I just, just uh, want to reiterate that we do take this all very seriously. We are on the front lines and we, those of us in the retail community sure will want to make sure that we're part of that conversation um, going forward. Uh, and many stores say that they are in compliance with it. Um, and basically that does it for my report. Uh, you can watch this meeting and more. This was a fairly, fairly, fairly short meeting. Um, it's about maybe a little more than 40 minutes. So yeah, it was a really short meeting. My last uh, city council was about three, four hours long and I dove into a lot of things. Um, but as always, you can go to ci.missoula.mt.us for more information about this and that. Yeah, this is a generally going to be a fairly short show for you guys, a nice short Halloween uh, gift for you guys. Um, but yeah, here is your, uh, and up next, we got your most recent COVID-19 report from uh, the city county health department. So check it out. And so while we are not wanting or looking to a lockdown right now, we are looking at cutting certain um, sectors and activities in half from where we've been since the governor put us in phase two back in on June 2nd. So looking at this diagram, we I'd like you to first focus on the goal we need to get to that 25 cases, seven day average per 100,000 population, just think of the 25, just to get back into the red zone on that metric. We are currently at 51. When we started on these orders in terms of just you know looking at our data with the health board and then with the elected officials and schools our epidemiological experts it was only about a week and a half ago and we were down at 33. i cannot impress upon you how quickly it went to 51 particularly when you're thinking of an average so even though we are doing the right things and we know that those things work we need a little higher dose. We need to calibrate and push back harder. So as you continue to look at this metric, I think you've seen all the reasons why we need to do that are under purposes. And I'll go into the actual measures here in a minute that we'll use or the orders that we'll use. And we will reassess once this these orders go into place, we will reassess at the end of the first incubation period for this virus. So the orders will go into place Thursday morning, the 29th at 8 a.m. And we will do our first reassessment on November 12th. And we will look at it every other week and report out weekly. If you look in the center, if we meet that goal to 25, we can either loosen or lift some of these orders. 
Hey guys, welcome back. I'm going to talk a little bit about what's happening within the city of Missoula in terms of events. Um, I usually don't talk too much about it because there's not too much to do in a, in a post-COVID pandemic world. Uh, but one of the many things that are constantly going on is the farmer's market. Farmer's market will start wrapping up their uh, market. Uh, it's still going to go on in, this Saturday. And most uh, places that I know say that they're going to be closing up on the end of October, the last Saturday of October is like the big uh, farmer's market be like, oh, we're done with selling this and that. Farms will stop selling some of their crops and whatnot. Um, but they're doing a couple Halloween uh, uh, holiday kind of deal. They're going to do a uh, youth Halloween bowl at Westside Lanes. They're going to do a candy crawl at the Southgate Mall. Um, there's probably going to be a lot of restrictions on that. There's going to be socially distanced spooky skate at the Glacier Ice Rink, so they'll probably be at a certain capacity. Uh, Halloween on Mars, they're going to do a virtual uh, stargazing, at the, the stargazing room. It seems like they're going to uh, provide this online as well, so if you to learn more information, you can go to this, you can register. Uh, so the special Halloween planetarium event, this is going to be a watch party of invaders of Mars. To kick things off, they will uh, do a group meeting of Zoom at 5 p.m. on Saturday. A watch and watch the movie and reconvene on a Zoom Q and A session. That sounds fun. Um, what else is there? There's going to be uh, movies in the garden. Uh, Halloween will be playing at the Roxy. It's their um, new annex that they uh, built, and it's going to be in that general area. And most places are. It's going to. It's harder to RSVP because of just like the capacity of people. Um, let's see. Yep, there's a couple other things here and there. There's going to be uh, Waypoint Church is doing a Trick or Treat 2020, and that starts at 6 p.m. as well. So a lot of times, a lot of the little kids will be going out doing their Halloween stuff as early as 6, 7 p.m. But just know, you guys, is that it's Daylight Savings Time this weekend as well. So on November 1st, which is this Sunday, the adjusted uh, hour uh, uh, fall back. So we're going to lose an hour. So... And, of course, you know, we're going to lose a little more daylight as we get further and further into December. Uh, we had that crazy snow that happened this week as well. But uh, knowing, <laughs> but being in Missoula and living here so long, it, we'll have a couple snow events happening throughout November. And then maybe we'll, uh, it always seems like we have a pretty dry uh, December, even on uh, Christmas Day, when uh, allegedly the uh, winter solstice is supposed to begin the official winter time, even though we technically have snow on the ground now so it's weird it's just it's just montana all right anyways uh that's pretty much a lot of the events that are happening in and around the city of missoula uh there's a couple other things happening you can go to missoulaevents.net for more information um i didn't I, I don't really talk too much about missoula events as well but i have some great news as well uh some more news uh according to the new missoula public library um MCAT has officially moved in, and there's a lot of interesting transitional errors that happened, mostly with our broadcasting equipment. Uh, if you go to our website, you don't actually, uh, you can't uh, necessarily pull up our 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 videos. So we have a we had a library with our cable cast system, but as of lately, when we're, we're changing the systems, we're uh, basically dropping an old system that was going on for about 10 years to a whole brand new system, which is digital, which is good, which is actually really cool. Because uh, with the administrative apps, yes, we're going to be basically controlling our broadcast channel through the power of technology and apps, which I think is really cool. Uh, hold on, let me take a drink. I'm um, <laughs> cotton-mouthing. Mm. <sighs> but, um, yeah, it's going to be pretty great mm, in the end. Um, but yeah, the new library site is very beautiful. Uh, there's still a lot of rearrangement to do. There's still a lot of preparation and whatnot before we open tour to the public. So I'll give you guys more on that later on. There's no confirmed date as I know it. Um, so just uh, keep your ear to the ground. The new library shall be open at some point. But I um, am trying to get together small tours of the new library. And so I've been um, coordinating with a couple groups, a couple of old MCAT staff and whatnot, just to have little private tours of the new library. Um, and I think it's, uh, yeah, it's, a, it's great fun uh, just for, to see the people's reactions and whatnot to the new library um, just kind of growing and just kind of see where it is. There's a lot of things that are just really completely done with it, but then there's a couple things that need to be kind of rearranged, completed, 
and uh, just dealt with. So there's uh, some minor interior stuff that needs to be done, but f as of right now, the gates are completely gone. You can walk right up to the window, look through the library, you can see the, the first floor. Uh, but other than that, um, yeah, I mean, you can check it out, and they always have a curbside a pickup. I'm going to be doing some more library news and whatnot, so they'll be doing some curbside pickup for anybody who wants to check out books. You can go to MissoulaPublicLibrary.org for uh, information, and you can check out books through their drive-thru, and it's an amazing drive-thru. It's really cool. So uh, at some point, uh, you guys will get a chance to see inside the library. I will make a short video for you guys so you can kind of see what you can get from the new library. So... That's going to be great. All right, so that's about it. I don't have anything more to say on my show. I'm just kind of vamping right now. So I want to thank you for guys for joining me. And for Wake Up Missoula, I'm Scott Ramp. Take care, guys.